PewDiePie was fired by Disney because he's anti-Jewish, or it seems like he is because of these nine videos he put up that are anti-Semitic. Then there's the video that he made, which has him saying, well, he really didn't say the N-word. What happened was he was put on some list of like the most attractive white guys, because that's what they were, you know? And he was number 18 and he went, oh, nah. okay? And then he cut off, right? And so, as you know, I don't like the term, all right? But he cut it off and everyone went ape and saying, oh, you said it, you said it, but it's a bad thing because you're white and all that stuff. Look, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't care if you're white, black, Asian, Hispanic. I don't care if you're Martian. I don't care if you're Alpha Centaurian. Just don't use the word. I mean, why bother? PewDiePie got to where he is by talking about games. But what bothers me about his success, not him, is the micro level intellect of discourse that he brings out. I miss the old days when YouTube promoted the Renettos and the Sprickets and people like myself at one point, which in 2007, and we had conversations that mattered about race relations, about life, about the future of vlogging. I can't make heads or tails over what PewDiePie is trying to get at. In fact, nothing. And then Perez Hilton says he's the worst, okay? But Perez Hilton talks about him because Perez knows that people pay attention to him, just like I'm talking about him because I know people pay attention to him. I don't hate on, look, this is gonna sound like I'm hating on PewDiePie, okay? I'm not, I'm not hating on PewDiePie. That's not the point. I don't hate the guy. He is obviously representing, is he really representing what a generation wants? I mean, seriously, here's the reason I asked, because the first time I heard of PewDiePie was by way of a press release from Maker Studios announcing that at the time he had hit the 30 million subscriber mark. And I was in Georgia and suburban Atlanta and I went out and I asked random people at you know the gas station or the store if they had ever heard of PewDiePie. And the response I got was, Pewdie who? What? Who's that? And I told them he's a YouTube star with 30 million subscribers. Never heard of him. Why is that? How can you have 30 million subscribers or 50 million and someone from, for example, the New York Post never heard of you? YouTube embarked on this, along with Maker Studios, public relations effort to let people know about these stars via stories and press releases and getting them on talk shows and that sort of thing. And the reason they did it was because they knew, the YouTube staff, as I know, as a YouTube partner, that you've got to justify to an advertiser why one of your so-called YouTube stars has 50 million or 15 million or 5 million subscribers and Josephina on the street has never heard of that person, let alone Joe Blow, right? Because in a normal world, someone that commands, say, oh, 20 million at the box office for a movie is someone you've heard of, like Denzel Washington or Julia Roberts, you know what I mean? But no one had ever heard of PewDiePie and still this PR campaign was embarked to talk about him and by that time he had already had this humongous level of subscribers. By contrast, there was on the Harry Connick Jr. show about three months ago, four months ago, a YouTube star, as he called it, and that YouTube star had not 30 million subscribers, not 20 million, not 10 million, not even 5 million, not 30, nothing, not even 300,000, not even 30,000. This particular person had just over 9 thousand subscribers which means that their subscriber base was just under the 10,000 mark where they could actually use the YouTube live mobile and yet this particular person 
It's a science guy. Chris Science? Sciency? Sciency. That's it. Sciency. Chris something. I forgot Chris's last name, but Science C. Science with a C, okay? And that's his YouTube channel. And the segment that Harry had him on doing this experiments was entertaining. I was very proud to see a fellow YouTuber on television. Ding! Bravo! And I thought, wait a minute. If he can get on television, how come I'm not on TV? I've got 34,000 subscribers. Almost 35,000. Hell, I ought to have 100,000. What's going on here? Everybody's gaming the system but me, right? Oh. It feels like that. It does. It really feels like that. It feels like everybody else is getting over but me. Is that a good thing? Ah, you know, because... Nah. It's a thing. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking this through. I'm thinking this through because I'm still stuck on the point that PewDiePie is not something that someone that even if I walked out today and I went to the gym and I said, hey, you ever heard of PewDiePie? Or I went to the airport, talked to a random person under 28, have you ever heard of PewDiePie? I'll bet you most of the time I would get no because we are in a, a, a fragmented society where what a person that's a celebrity to you is someone that somebody else hasn't heard of, okay? I mean, even I've been stopped in airports. Kid you not, yeah? So everybody has, that's it. We're in the era of the niche celebrity. Everyone hasn't heard of me. Everyone hasn't heard of PewDiePie. But there's some people who've heard of me, and there's some people who've heard of PewDiePie. But on the other hand, everybody's heard of George Clooney, right? That's the magic of television. Okay. Yeah, you can tell I'm, I'm exercised about this. I am. Because between fake subscribers and fake views, or are they fake? When is a view not a view? On the other hand, when is a view a view? Yeah? You make one video, people don't respond. You make another, all of a sudden, bzz, everybody responds. Like for me, it's Raider Nation. But I can remember when my base was more political and I got the conservatives chiming in the liberals and somewhere around 2013 things shifted if you were black conservative for some particular reason you got a lot of subscribers a lot of subscribers there were a lot of flash in the pants people that were active in 2013 or 12 and then psh, you don't hear from them anymore they're gone I think I'm still standing. And I'm thinking, how did they get more subscribers than I did? But then I looked at their view count. My view count, which is at almost 70 million, is much better, much greater than theirs, right? You say, why does all that matter? Well, hey, the more views you get, the more money you make, that sort of thing. That's why it matters. That's why it matters. And I don't think you want to buy subscribers because you're buying something that isn't real and you're not going to make money off that it's they're just gonna sit there and they're not gonna contribute to anything so you want to be careful with that but back to PewDiePie you know if I maybe I got more views if I just sat in the chair like this so I spun around like he does and yeah yeah and he I said no nah. no nah. crap like that nah I'll stick to news commentary come to think of it PewDiePie because of his antics has become news bravo Great for the YouTubers, like me, like me. Ah.